What if your web browser could do everything? And I mean, web browsers kind of already do everything in our lives, but I mean, what if it had apps and functionality built into the web browser and they're actually pretty good? Well, what you'd have is a project that already exists and it's called Vivaldi. So that's what we're gonna look at today. All right, welcome back. We're gonna jump onto the desktop and have a look at Vivaldi web browser. Now, Vivaldi has been around as a web browser for some time now, but with each new release that comes out, and we're up to 5.3, it seems to garner more and more features. The most recent of which is a full-blown email client built into the web browser. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do I need an email client or anything else in my web browser? Surely there are web apps that already exist for this. Well, offline functionality. Not everyone is connected to the internet all the time. And some of these apps actually have decent offline capabilities outside of an internet connection. The other thing is synchronization, when you can have all of your apps and settings built into one program and be able to sync those things across multiple platforms, that's a pretty exciting proposition. Now I know what else you might be thinking, hang on, this channel's about showcasing alternatives. Is this thing open source? Well, yes and no. Parts of this are definitely open source. It's built on a Chromium based web engine, uh, which is open sourced. And there are components of Vivaldi that are open source. However, not all of it is open source. And Vivaldi has been very, very straightforward with why they haven't open sourced the code yet. So you can definitely go and read why, the link's in the description below as to why. This is not a sponsored video by Vivaldi by any stretch, although I feel like they have reached out before. Anyway, I just wanted to have a look at Vivaldi because I think it's a fascinating project. So if you are looking for an alternative web browser that has plenty of productive features for you to explore explore, then hop on board. Let's have a look. All right. So I am currently on Fedora 36 as a desktop environment and I'm running on a pretty old machine. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to use this machine to just kind of showcase what Vivaldi is capable of as a productive tool. Now, when it comes to uh, as a web browser, we kind of all know what to expect. It's a Chromium based browser, which means that the a lot of the same tools and compatibility still apply. So you can use things like the Chrome Web Store extensions, et cetera, et cetera. But this is very much its own beast, its own interface, its own way of doing things. And it usually has a lot more configuration ability than what a lot of other web browsers do. And that's kind of its whole charm. When it comes to appearance or what components you wanna have in the interface itself, all of this comes down to a extremely capable tool. Now, the reason why I'm talking about it today is because of the fact that they kept adding new features to Vivaldi over the time that it's been developed. And uh, most recently, while they already had included things like a calendar, an RSS reader and others, they recently added and, and it officially went stable, a full blown email client. So that means that over on the sidebar here, when you are working in your web browser, you can quickly jump over to the side, compose an email, fire it off or check your inbox as you go. And again, while we all, or at least most of us, according to statistics, manage our email through a web browser client anyway, as in like Gmail's website or Outlook's website, it is great to have a local option that doesn't rely on an internet connection. So when you're setting up one of these email clients for the first time within Vivaldi, you can configure it to download the messages locally into a stored cache on the laptop or device's hard drive. That means that when you don't have internet, and there are places in the world where internet connections are a bit sketchy that you can have access to your emails and still be able to uh, and also queue up ones to send from the web browser when you reconnect to the internet. Now, it also just means that you have a single toolbar running down the left-hand side that you can kind of configure with whatever web apps you so desire. Now, all of the typical web browser functionality is here, bookmarks, reading modes, download list, browsing history, but some of the other unique features that Vivaldi brings to the table are things like note-taking or things like web page tiling within the web browser. So when you have a look inside the settings as to what is capable of configuring here in Vivaldi, you get a bit of a sense of what is possible. Now, if you would just like a stock standard browser, it is very simple to reset the whole browser back to just a conventional web browser. And more importantly, you get an option when you first start up the browser as to whether you want a minimal standard or max full productivity mode enabled. 
While I'm not going to go into all the nooks and crannies in this particular episode, because that would just get too long, what I can say is that the performance is about on par for what you'd expect of a Chromium-based browser. Now, some people will maintain that um, Vivaldi can manage to do it a bit quicker. You'll notice that this is really stalling because I'm on an old laptop and I'm running the screen recording on the laptop, which probably isn't the smartest move. But when it comes to benchmarking and that kind of thing, Vivaldi stacks up fairly respectably against its Chromium-based siblings. But Vivaldi does like to hang its hat on the amount of RAM usage that it uses. And statistics seem to indicate that it does use a fair bit less. At any time, you can collapse or close any of these panels, toolbars, etc. And it's worth spending some time looking around the internet to see what else this browser can do configuration-wise. But uh, even if you fancy a bit of a game to play, Vivaldi's got your back. This seems to be a trendy thing for browsers to do give you a game to play when you are offline. The final thing that I'll mention in terms of Vivaldi's capabilities this time around is that it also has some really sane defaults when it comes to privacy and security. You can very easily uh, enable a kind of a three tier security and privacy system where you can either block ads, block cookies, block ads and cookies and tracking. There's uh, and then you can jump into the settings and you can dial in what specific settings you would like to enable in terms of privacy and security online. And like I mentioned, the sync account means that you can synchronize a lot of these settings between the desktop versions of Vivaldi on uh, Windows, Mac and Linux. So have you checked out Vivaldi recently? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.